Anxiety, the Positive Perspective Podcast. This podcast provides greater understanding and awareness for those challenged by anxiety and for the people that love them. Well-known authors Michelle LaFord and Jennifer Thompson bring it to the table with truth and vitality. Now, too. I'm yeah, going to record so now. It's both recorded. <laughs> You're funny. You are so much fun. I don't, I don't believe you had the dots. I don't believe it. It's too much fun. <laughs> now, we wanted to make this first episode a little special. Not that every episode is not special. But we wanted to be able to kind of bring to you our value system and our goals for what we're doing. And we want to start with some affirmations. We are beautiful women. We are strong women. And yet we're soft and nurturing. And I love that about us. We're amazing women. And we aim to empower others to see within themselves such potential or a positive perspective. And so um, being intentional and mindful and uh, to affirm that we can truly empower you is what we're after. I love that. I'm, yeah. I, I'm on board. I'm on board with all of that, Michelle. <laughs> yes. We are, and I always have a pen in my hand. So let's just, just talk a little bit about who we are. Jennifer Thompson, and how do you uh, prefer to be referred to? I like, you can call me uh, Jen, whatever Jen. you like. Uh, basically, I've been a wealth advisor for, for 20, over 20 years. And before that, I taught in a private school. But uh, I still do wealth advice. And what, I, what Michelle reached out to me and asked me if we'd like to collaborate. And I, I just thought this must be a real a special message from the universe uh, on, on several levels. First thing is I want to dispel this idea that money and wealth is just what's in your bank account. And I think, uh, and Michelle really exudes what I believe is a woman uh, who is thriving in the sense of well being. So when I see wealth, when I talk about wealth, I see it as a sense of well being. Because for women, it's never really just about the money, it's no. about their relationships. It's, and what's so beautiful, I think, and separates women from men in, when I've been dealing with wealth for 20 years and lots of clients, uh, I think women always look at any aspect of their lives in, how, in relation to everyone else around it. You know, when I talk, about, talk to Michelle, she straight away talks to me about her family and how her, the time she had anxiety and how her battle with it impacted everyone. And that's what I love. And I found mm -hmm. Michelle in my business. When I deal with men and women, it's really quite interesting. Women look at money from all, from all sides, how it impacts everyone. And guys can just look at money just on, the, on money itself. Right. <laughs> yeah, and that's how I, and I think we're really the special. is important. Yeah. yeah, women are special. Yeah. Right. And so you're educated and you're articulate and you have, five, do you have more than five books out or do you have five? I have five books that I've written. Yeah. And I'm doing another one and I'm working on a, a, a naughty novel as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, novel. that's the thing about us women, right? Uh, Michelle, we have so many sides. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I am nothing compared to everything you've done. I am absolutely humbled and floored by your by by your your qualifications and everything so i feel like i'm going to be learning a lot <laughs> well and i think you know <laughs> to say that i think <laughs> i've always said uh, my friends call me the oxymoron okay because i'm very very silly and and i like to have a good time but there's always this underlying uh seriousness about me you know I'm, I'm always have that underlying seriousness and um i went back and finished my education it took me 17 years to get my bachelor's degrees and i ended up coming out with two bachelor's degrees i have uh management and ethics and um bible studies so i went back and studied what i actually enjoyed uh, in the end. And then I finished my MBA and started a PhD, but I, I will never finish it. I hated the PhD education. There was so much reading and the abstracts to me were very boring. 
Um, I wasn't learning. I'm a hands-on learner and I just didn't like the PhD program that, um, that I was in. So unless I go to Harvard for a PhD, I'm not going to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm glad you mentioned about the fact that you like something practical. You know what I mean? Hands on, because that's what I think we're going to be offering people. Yeah. We're on the same page. I want people to tune in and, and say, you know, they're speaking my language. It's not some like, uh, you know, doctor's words on anxiety and stuff like that. It's their language. And Absolutely. that's what you've been doing for me. I'm packing in, in layman's terms. <clears throat> I like that. Yeah. And it has to be. It has to be in lay terms. Um, and, and yet we're going to get into some, some scientific semantics with it as well. But just speaking to people in a voice that they can hear us. And as writers, you know, we have to do that. So that's kind of fun and it's a challenge. So we'll say some things different ways until um, it breeds understanding. And you may not always get it the first time, but I didn't. I surely didn't get it the first time. It takes me, it beat it into my head. Um, so uh, let's let's go ahead and start. This is episode one. We're yes. just new at this. Yay. And so, yeah, <laughs> we're very excited. And, um, you know, we've only had a few conversations. I mean, we've known each other um, over uh, technology for a week. Right. And so this is going to be our debut of taking all the fun that we've had in a week and putting it into this, this episode. And yes. I think today is more a getting to know us a little bit and kind of hearing about what it is that, that we may want to articulate with this. So um, I, I kind of think we've talked about a little bit. It's kind of a question answer session. So yes. you're the investigator and I'll just let you pick my little tiny brain apart as much as possible. And yes. it is about anxiety. It is about a positive perspective. And I do want to state that you and I both are very universal thinkers. Yes. Um, we've grown to that. I think we've uh, evolved in our worlds from very straightforward entrepreneurs and what we thought women should be to uh, a universal uh, thought process, a universal love and energy, uh, moving a light forward. Uh, I think it's really hard when people start looking at universal thinking because they realize that they're just a piece of this world. So and so yeah, you know, we're all cogs in the engine, so to speak, but we move about with an energy and uh, every breath that we take shows that energy, just like um, our pets, um, different people that we meet, and we know them immediately. Uh, you can say whatever. It's just that your energies meld together in a very positive way. Yes. Uh, contrary to that, I've met people before that I want nothing to do with just from a handshake. Um, I don't like them in my space. And I go with my intuition as to, you know, who I trust and who I don't. So I think that that something um, really important is if you enjoy what we say, I mean, if you feel a vibe, you know, become part of this tribe, the anxiety, uh, you'll know someone who has anxiety, whether you do or not, there is someone. <laughs> You know, Michelle, what you said, and I, I think it's so beautifully stated, and I think it's one of your tools in your tool bag with dealing anxiety. So what I gathered from just what you said is that you've become in tune to your body uh, and your energy. And in some ways, that is in, in many ways, that could be bridging over from the anxiety. Yeah. mastering the anxiety so you you become in tune to your surroundings to the people around you and you know what feels what feeds and what does not absolutely you know yeah and i get that and I, when we first connected i thought uh, you know the first thing that popped out was you're very perceptive and and you you 
you're integrated you're integrated which is nice yeah, yeah. I, I try you know and it's one of those things i try yeah so, all right well let's get into it what kind of questions do you have today let's pop this off okay the first thing i want to know uh and i want viewers to know is michelle experienced anxiety and i don't like the word battle but she had she found various ways e either she was battling it she was managing it now she's overcome it and yes. you know and that's what's so beautiful and i think our language too has to to also resemble what we want for our lives absolutely and, um, so the first thing i noticed is when she first told me she suffered from anxiety i said you've got to be kidding me <laughs> there's no way you just i told her you're bsing because i saw this person who's very accomplished very put together funny and so intuitive and you know the synergy was so good and i said there's no way but then she totally unpacked it for me and from my perspective i had uh, my older daughter suffered from anxiety as a teenager and not only, I wish I could just say I was helpless, but no, I think in some ways I might have not been helpful, not just not helpful, <laughs> but I might have said things that hurt. And when I, and the, for me being part of this, I was laughing to Michelle. I said, I don't know if this is the universe telling me this is my raise or debt, but telling, <laughs> telling her, get over it. And it's not about that. No. And the more Michelle educated me on anxiety, I thought, oh my God, imagine if the whole world heard this. So from the perspective of a caregiver, from the perspective of someone who loves someone else, I've had friends who've got anxiety and I think I was the last person they would ever share their pain because back then I was like, you know, get over it. No, it's not just about positive language and it's not just about positive thinking. And that's what Michelle has taught me. It's quite beautiful, actually. Right. And I, I did a radio interview yesterday. It was just a short interview. And he said, so, you know, trying to drag yourself out of bed and, you know, get on with your day. And I said, that never bothered me. That's, that's, not, that's not what this is. The perception that people have, the perspective with which they view this from is so askew. And so I try and explain it from a different vantage point. So I did suffer for 29 years. And when I use the word suffer, it truly was suffer um, and it was daily. It just never goes away. And I explained it to you. I felt like I was hovering in a corner, protecting myself from myself. It was inside of me. And so um, there's a couple of things that we'll talk about real quick. The first is anxiety. I call my anxiety Annie. And I always say, you know, Annie's right here. This is my anxiety because I needed a physical presence to pull away from me so that I could rationalize it for myself because what made me helpless was how those thoughts and sensations and emotions controlled my physical response. It would increase my heart rate, it would increase my respiration. My blood flow would center in my core the, the area where it needed it most, my heart, my lungs, my big muscle group, so I could fight or I could flee. And now they have discovered another um, option to that. We have the fight or flight response also has an added freeze response. And there were times I would just freeze, Jen. I would be in a line at the grocery store and all of a sudden get this blast of, of anxiety. I now call it a blast of energy because I take a positive perspective. It's Perfect. just energy. Yeah. yeah. And so then when I get that, ah, uh, you know, I say, oh, there she is. There's Annie being a little butthead. You so know, when I, yeah, when I was listening to you the last week and just what you said and the things I garnered from it, because when I think of anxiety and I think of very stressful situations, a few things I want you to tell us, and maybe we can do it on the next episode is, at what point does the feeling, the anxious feelings we all get at some point, at what point does that become a disorder and it becomes where it starts to take over your life? I love, I absolutely love your physiological description of anxiety. Right. Because um, right away I can feel it. I told Michelle, my back, my body, I can feel it. And I can remember 
occasions. But I want to know, Michelle, because we all get stressful situations. Mm -hmm. I think life has got more stressful ever, you know, with more internet and all that. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell us, unpack it slowly. What does energy feel like? So someone looking in can say, oh my God, so is that what my daughter was feeling? Is that what my husband's feeling? Is that what, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I love how you've separated it. <laughs> I love it so empowering. If I was like, let's say if I was a teacher and kids were feeling anxious, but I love how you separated it. Your anxiety does not define you. You put her and call her Annie. And we all Annie. got, we've all got segments of ourselves. You know, I've got, uh, I call mine Eric and Arnold or something. <laughs> I've got one side of me that's quite full of myself. So I put it aside. It's not me, but I love that you've got this. When you told me that alone, I thought, how empowering is that? You've put her really aside. Is. This is what Annie's doing. And you said, that's not, that's not me. That's Annie now misbehaving. This is how I can handle her. Right. So what we look at is to separate from the anxiety, which is your first step. It's your most yeah. important step is to create something physically outside of you. I use this because I had it. I was yes. playing with the baby one day and I was like, oh, Gucci, Gucci, goo, Gucci. Goo. You know what? I feel like this lion is roaring at me all the time in my head. And what if I make this lion my anxiety and I try and say to myself, okay, we're going to talk about this because I never get to talk about it. It just overwhelms me so quickly. Right. And what it is, is it's this set of thoughts. It's like Annie knows my wildest fears and she uses them against me to protect me. She's built from a place of protection. And it came uh, after some time working with Annie on my own that I realized she really is built from a place of protection, Jen. She's trying to keep that. me safe. And I'm like, get off me. You know, I don't need you to do that. But when I was emotionally overwhelmed, when I was overwhelmed with all those racing thoughts that brought about more emotion and my body started physically responding to it, it's like Annie says, what was that? Your heart skipped a beat. <gasps> and my hypothalamus doesn't stop to say, is this danger real or not? Annie's in control of the danger response. So wow. when Annie goes, ah, the hypothalamus says, oh, here's some adrenaline and cortisol. Psh and it drops into my system, my heart rate increases, my respiration gets faster, my blood flow glows, goes directly to my core, so my fingers might tingle or they, they feel weird, my toes will get cold, because all that blood flow is making it so I can fight harder, I can run right. faster. Right. The stomach and digestive system was something that uh, was foreign to me. Your digestive system is a suspendable system. It doesn't work all the time. And so it would shut down. It would suspend. Right. So the blood flow wasn't needed in my stomach and it could be more useful to my heart and my lungs and my, my quads or my biceps. So once I understood that, that knot in my stomach every time I started to get those feelings or sensations or thoughts, my stomach would hurt. Well, now I know why. You know, now I know it doesn't bother me. You know, my stomach hurts. Oh, my digestive system suspended for a minute. Oh, well. But I love, Michelle, what I found most empowering was, again, you said uh, your anxiety or your body was really protecting you. Mm -hmm. And you, so yeah. when we can see something good out of something like anxiety, and it's, protect, it's giving you a signal. It and is. Then now, so the next, in the next episode, you can tell us how to deal with that signal. I love it. What you said about, you know, the, the blood flow and all the rest of it. How amazing is our body? But also, now what can we do about it? Right. We do have yeah. control. And that's yeah. just it. When you have an anxiety disorder, you feel like you've lost control. Right. You, you have no control. You're literally just sitting there cowering at all of these thoughts and feelings and emotions. And so what I learned was I wanted to take my power back. And so I wanted to recondition Annie. I wanted to have Annie act differently. Annie was this spoiled little child throwing yes, yes. these fits. Yes. And 
so I just started seeing her as I'm steering the car and she's in the back seat throwing the tantrum. We've all had the children that threw the tantrum in the back seat. Exactly. You're yelling over your shoulder and you're like, I'm trying to drive, you know, or my dad who was really good and he could reach back and whack you. And, and you'd be like, oh. <laughs> you know, so I got, I got these long arms that he had. So I'll be whapping her in the back seat and taking away yeah. her ability to just pummel me. Right. And yeah. once I did that, I started being able to observe things. So, so we're going from thing. instinct to intention too, right? Absolutely. The instinct instinct to, to intention. Like run whatever it is. Again, convert the, the thinking, she's protecting me. She's not trying to attack me. Now, how can I handle her? I love yeah. it, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I, I've thrown her out my car window while I was driving. <laughs> And did you go run back and get her after that? Did. You have to turn around and go grab her. <laughs> I went to a job interview. And I want to know that, yeah. Okay, so okay. I'm driving to this job interview, which for me, driving is just difficult. That's when Annie attacks me the most. And oh. so I have my friend in the car with me. And, you know, we're driving along and I'm like, bitch, shut up. And my friend is like, what? And I'm like, not you, it's her. And I'm like, Annie is just all <laughs> over me. I need to go to this job interview. You know, this is a really good job. And I, re I was broke, Jen. I had zero dollars in the bank, zero money in my pocket. Um, I had some people who decided to destroy my life for me. And they got me kicked off. I was on a disability insurance at that time. I got kicked off of that. They called in and said I was um, faking and that I was making money on the side. So they cut that off until they could investigate it. They got my income tax put in an audit. So I didn't get my refund. They got me kicked out of my home that I had just moved into because I had a beautiful five bedroom home mm -hmm. that just for me ended up being a place where people um, saw an opportunity to live for free or to mooch. And so I decided to get rid of the house. And I had moved in with um, a woman who I had custody of her grandchildren and it was disastrous. And <laughs> my mood and the negativity and the chaos. And I'm trying to get well. You know, I'm, I'm trying to decipher this program and build this program, which in the end, it was amazing because through all of that, I still built recovery. And I still yeah. found the process. And so I'm driving to this job interview, which is really important to me. I mean, I can't eat. I lost 57 pounds in a matter of maybe six months because I couldn't afford to eat. And so Annie started in and I yell at her. My friend is like, what, what do I do? And I'm like, it's not you. And at that moment, I thought, you're not only disturbing me now, you've disturbed her. And I just took her and I flung her out the window. And I said, there, we're done with that drove to the interview, did my interview, which I don't have problems with interviews. You know, I've been on the other side of that chair, the desk. And so I know what they're going to ask. I know what they're looking for. It, I, don't, I don't have to think about it. I researched the company. I was familiar with them. Ace the interview. On the way home, I see her laying on the thing. And I said, I'm going to pull over and pick her back up. <laughs> so pulled over, picked her back up. <laughs> <laughs> Put her back on the dash in my car where she lived and went about my business. So you made me laugh. I shouldn't be laughing because it is a serious situation, Michelle, but I want to let you know you're quite engaging. Well, it's funny, but it's, it's funny. funny. You, know, you can look back truth. now and laugh at it, right? And that's where we want people to be. We want people to be where they can look back and see. But let's come back after this and so we'll finish this segment. And I've got so many questions just based on everything you said. I'm dying to ask you. Okay, we'll right. okay, talk so, later. <laughs> where do we want where do we want to go with this? Because I don't I don't know the timing on it. Um, I'm not okay. There. I didn't want to interrupt you, right, Han? But it was you were excellent. You were excellent. You were excellent. So now let's stop this and do the next one. And the next one will cut it short. I like the spontaneity. So even though I knew the time was going too far. I didn't want to interrupt you. But Michelle, I have so many questions, Han. 
I have so many. Well, let's get to them. Let's, let's go. So we one. change now. Let's change. Well, let's let's go ahead and, and give them a conclusion here. I like to do yeah. the summation. Okay, so, sure. This is anxiety, the positive perspective. Right. Uh, it's an empowerment. And it's not just for women, but I think that we speak very vividly to right. women. Um, we just in our worlds are followed by a lot of women. Yes. So men not so much. I mean, right. I, you know, I can get funny with that too. But okay. we, we want to show you that you're strong and that yes. you're beautiful and that your presence is wanted in this world because sometimes we forget um, if we're negative, People don't want to be around us. When we meet people, that vibe that we give off. And so sometimes we have to work our way out of negativity to get into a positive perspective. And that's what we're looking at. So some empowerment to let you know that no matter who you are, there's beauty in there. Let's go find it. Because sometimes we shadow it. And you know what, Michelle, I think I, I can, I think a lot of women, I think all of us women really are always trying our very best. We Absolutely. really are. I agree, we, I agree with that. We're our harshest critics. Absolutely. And Absolutely. when we're dealing with anxiety, the power to get well, 100% is within you. That is the worst news you'll ever hear because there's not some trick pill or doctor that's going to get you over. But the, the beauty of it, on the other hand, is you have control of it. You just need mm -hmm. to know how to take control. So okay. we're going to end this episode, episode one of Anxiety, the Positive Perspective. Thank you for joining us. And we're just going to have a good time. So y'all are going to just have to put up with our shit because we are just going to have fun. <laughs> And we're going to talk. For real. We're just reality. going to be ourselves. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So, okay. all right, let's move on.